Well, I've used adaptive learning in a large introductory psychology class that most students take, and there's just one introductory psychology class. It's not like biology where there's majors and then there's non-majors and now there's even a third. Everybody's all together from the engineers all through everybody. And um, so that's part of the challenge and that's what drew us to adaptive learning. And one of the biggest um, the wins and the reasons that we continue using it is that when we started using adaptive quizzing, they preferred it to the online static quizzing we were doing before. We had much less time spent going over why question two, the answer was C and not D, because with adaptive quizzing, you can just kind of click, um, flag that question and move on. And students stopped coming to our office hours um, with the book saying, I just can't read this. Who could read this? Look at it kind of a thing and like poking it <laughs> as if they, they were scared to open it. This got them to um, find, they had to have that book and open it and it got them at least using the book and that, that went away. Um, when we lectured, we could assume um, after the adaptive learning that they knew a certain key set of words. So they may not have known those concepts very well, but at least we were, we, I personally stopped defining words um, in lecture and that got us pretty far down the, uh, down the road. The, the challenges, and this is what the research that I did comes in, is just really that, like anything else, the stronger students who came in with higher SAT scores used the system better than all the, than the other students did. They gained more from it. So that's a challenge if your goal of, from adaptive learning was to close achievement gaps, because um, just like anything else, it looks like our highest performing. We have a lot of um, pre-meds studying for the MCAT. Oh, do they love this product? And they come to me and they say, I use it to find out what I don't know so that I can learn that better. And um, the students that were concerned about the, the DFW students, that's just not how they're using it. They're even despite our very best efforts, they continue to find ways to find low effort ways to get through the system, even though it takes them longer, even though it, irrational in my mind, um, it still happens. And so the challenge is really defining what the success is. What is the end goal? Are we okay with that system working better for the stronger students? Or, or was the goal really to support the weaker students and bring them up? Because that's not necessarily what we're seeing as an outcome. So I think just to add to what you're saying, Kathy, to me that begs the question of, you know, we're talking about faculty needing support to use a lot of these tools, but then the question is what kind of support would students need in order to overcome a learning curve so that we don't continue to affirm gaps uh, in preparedness even through the technology? Yeah, so we started to experiment with different ways of um assigning the tool, so we assign it so that it requires them to do spaced practice, so we know that that should help, and then um, we tried to tell them what the research showed, which we used to say, fine, just click through, just do anything, because before they weren't even opening the book, they were just poking it, so we thought, well, open it up and do the homework, and now we don't say that anymore, because the evidence just, that's not going to do it. Really, I go in and show them, you have to quiz yourself with some effort and, and, and see some improvement, like anything else, like like anything else in education or physical education or anything else. So we're trying to um, teach them better ways to use it and uh, the jury's out on whether they are listening 